This is the story of the butterfly that stamped, and it happened just so. Long ago, in the high and far off times, when the world was nearly new, there was a lovely garden full of orange trees and camphor trees and roses. And in the middle of this lovely garden was a great and golden palace. And in the middle of that great and golden palace were 999 queens. And in the middle of the 999 queens was the most wise and benevolent sovereign, King Suleiman bin Daoud. And some of his wives were nice, but some were simply horrid. And the horrid ones quarreled with the nice ones and made them horrid too. And then they all quarreled with Suleiman bin Daoud, and that was horrid for him. He was, of course, an extremely powerful king. He only had to turn the ring on his finger to summon up four great gull-wing jinns who could easily have magicked all those 999 quarrelsome wives into white mules of the desert. Or camels. Or even pomegranate seeds. But he didn't. He knew that that would be boasting and showing off. So when the quarreling became too great, he would slip away to seek out his first and most loved wife, Balkis, the most beautiful. Oh, my Lord and light of my eyes, said Balkis, please turn the ring on your finger and make a magic to show those quarrelsome queens how great and important you are. Oh, my lady and delight of my life, said Suleiman bin Daoud, I cannot do as you ask, for that would be mere boastful show. Perhaps if I sit alone beneath my favorite camphor tree, I might come upon the answer. Balkis loved Suleiman bin Daoud very much, so she hid where she could watch over him. Suddenly the silence was broken by the sound of quarreling. Suleiman bin Daoud looked up, expecting to see some of his worrisome wives. But no, it was two little butterflies. Really, wife? I don't know how you dare to keep on insulting me so, said one little butterfly. Don't you know that I have only to stamp with my foot and all Suleiman bin Daoud's great golden palace and his lovely garden would immediately vanish in a clap of thunder? Then for the first time in years, Suleiman bin Daoud forgot about his quarrelsome wives and started to laugh at the little butterfly's boast and said, Little brother, please come here. The butterfly was dreadfully frightened, but wishing to impress his wife, he tried to look brave and did as he was bid. Little brother, whispered the king, why did you tell that enormous fib to your wife? Oh, King, live forever, gasped the butterfly. Please forgive me, but she is always quarreling with me, and I just had to think of something to stop her. You know what wives are like. Yes, smiled Suleiman bin Daoud. I know, little brother. See where your boasting has got you. The great king heard you, and it serves you right for telling lies. Heard me, said the butterfly. Of course he heard me. I meant him to hear me. I'm not frightened of anyone. 
Indeed, said his wife. Well, what did he say? Well, um, between you and me, my dear, he uh, asked me not to stamp. After all, his palace and garden must have cost a great deal. So as a kindness to him, I promised I wouldn't. Gracious, said his wife, and sat quite still. Suleiman bin Dawood just had to laugh at the impudence of the bad little butterfly. And Balkis smiled, and she thought, through my lord's selfless care for these two little creatures, I may find a way to save him from the incessant quarrelling of his queens. Little sister, come here, please. Do you believe what your husband has just said? Oh, queen, live forever, fluttered the butterfly's wife. I pretended to be impressed just to keep him happy. You know what husbands are. Yes, I know, little sister. Next time he threatens to stump, tell him to do so. It will put a stop to his boasting once and for all. Away flew the butterfly's wife to her husband. And soon they were quarreling worse than ever. Remember, warned the butterfly, remember what I can do if I stamp my foot. I don't believe you. You couldn't bend a blade of grass. Go ahead. I dare you to do it. Stamp. Stamp. She wants me to stamp, panted the butterfly. You know I can't do it. Oh, help me, please. She laugh at me to the end of my days. No, she won't, little brother. She will never laugh at you or quarrel needlessly with you again. <laughs> oh, slave, said Suleiman bin Dawood, when this gentleman stumps his foot, you will make my palace and gardens disappear in a clap of thunder. When he stumps again, you will bring them back, carefully. Oh, there you are, cried the butterfly's wife. I thought you were going to stump. Go on then, stump, stump. And the butterfly did. the butterfly's wife. I'll never doubt your word again. Oh, please put everything back to normal. So the butterfly, who was nearly as frightened as his wife, stumped again. Then, 99 queens ran shrieking out of the palace. Oh, head queen, they gasped. One minute we were busily quarreling in the palace, and the next we were in a great thundering darkness. Then Balkis, the most beautiful and wise, said, It is nothing. A butterfly complained to our king about his quarrelsome wife, so it pleased our lord Suleiman bin Dawood to teach her a lesson. Oh, gasped the queens, if this great deed is done by our king on account of a little quarrelsome butterfly, how much greater will be his revenge on us who have vexed him for many years with our incessant quarreling? And they tiptoed back to the palace, mousy quiet. Oh, my lady and jewel of my happiness, said the king. When did this marvelous thing happen? 
I have been so busy jesting with a butterfly that I don't know how this came to pass. And Balkas told him, and they lived happily and peacefully for ever and ever, as did the butterfly's wife and the boastful little butterfly himself, the first and last butterfly ever in the world to stump.